The next two years are setting up to be busy politically. All eyes on 2024 and if President Biden and former President Trump will face off again. I spoke with News Nation Washington Bureau Chief Mike Vaccara on Trump and Biden and their political futures. Has the door opened wide enough, Mike, that he could face a legitimate challenge in the nomination? Uh, we're talking about President Trump, Marnie? Correct. Former President Trump? Uh, yes, I think without a doubt. I mean, three months ago, you would have never seen even Mike Pence, uh, his former vice president, of course, who was the target of so much uh, ire and potential attacks on his own person on January 6th in 2021. He, he has come out uh, making statements disagreeing with his former boss, President Trump. Mike Pompeo, the former secretary of state and CIA director. All of these people, Nikki Haley, uh, Glenn Youngkin in Virginia, who sort of ran away from Trump in that surprise victory he had last year in the gubernatorial race there. All of these people sort of trying now to get their distance from President Trump. And they don't do that because uh, they think it's a political loser. Uh, they do it because they sense weakness now from the former president. Uh, the investigations, the revelations about the documents in Mar-a-Lago, while the president's hardcore supporters think that it was the greatest injustice that ever happened, that FBI raided Mar-a-Lago, which incidentally could be the subject of another Republican investigation in, in a House committee in the coming year. Uh, but all of these candidates now uh, trying to get their distance, they sense weakness from President Trump. I think we are going to see in very short order in 2023 the presidential race. If it doesn't start, already start early enough for you, Marnie, uh, I think it's going to be an exceptionally early start now with all of these candidates trying to position themselves uh, to take on President Trump. I, one other thing. I talked with a retiring senator, uh, Senator Rob Portman of Ohio, not exactly a Trump Republican, a rhino by some, widely respected by others for his uh, willingness to be bipartisan. Uh, he told me he doesn't think that, that in the end, uh, President Trump is going to actually run for president again. So a lot of question marks here, uh, and certainly the political position coming out of the midterms now, when Mehmet Oz lost in Pennsylvania, uh, when a number of other candidates that the president had backed in Georgia uh, and elsewhere lost their bids. Of course, we have to mention J.D. Vance in Ohio. He won. Uh, but Warnock beating Herschel Walker and other races, uh, sensing weakness are Republican rivals of former President Trump and really starting to hit the ground and show up at these campaign style events, these early events that sort of inspire donors and supporters to get behind them as we head into what is, again, going to be an early start to the presidential race, Marty. Yeah, you're right about that, Mike. It has started. And on the other side, Biden has not announced yet if he will seek re-election. What are your sources saying? I think that Joe Biden has been running for president since 1988. And I think that uh, given this, the fact that he's finally there uh, would lead me to believe and everything I know about uh, the Senator Biden when I covered him when he was a senator and President Biden as I cover him in the White House leads me to believe that, of course, he's going to run. Uh, you know, he would be 82 years old when he when and if he were sworn in in uh, January of 2025. Uh, but I think given the outcome of the midterms, given the role that he played, Marnie, and we don't talk about this a lot, uh, in rearranging the Democratic primary schedule heading into 2024. Remember, he's basically thrown Iowa out and put New Hampshire, which always had the first primary, Iowa being a caucus, put New Hampshire in second place, rewarding the South Carolina Congressman Jim Clyburn, who helped him win in 2020, South Carolina, putting him on the path to victory in the White House, making South Carolina first. The point is, is that President Biden asserted himself in that process uh, so he could favorably gain some traction early in the primary process. I don't think that there is a Democrat that's going to come out and challenge President Biden in the primary as we sit here uh, today, just after Christmas. Uh, I think that uh, it's highly unlikely. Last time I can remember it happening was Ted Kennedy uh, challenging Jimmy Carter and on the Democratic side in 1980. That weakens your president, even though he's a president, presidential incumbent. Uh, we know what happened to Jimmy Carter in 1980, being routed by Ronald Reagan. Uh, remember in 1992, Pat Buchanan on the Republican side challenged uh, George H.W. Bush, Bush 41, weakening him. He lost to, to Bill Clinton. And we can go back as far as 1952 or even 
1912. Boy, really history channel <laughs> Boy, lesson here. Boy, political history lesson Teddy, here, Mike. Teddy, you're taking us way Teddy back. Roosevelt <laughs> challenge. Teddy, I want to talk about the bull moose party. Oh, my so, gosh. Teddy I need Roosevelt. to get out and, like, my notebook and start taking notes now. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> hey, hey, real point quick. is, Go primaries ahead. are not good for incumbents, <laughs> Marty. Well said, well said. Uh, final question, okay. final question. Uh, so Democrats obviously have control of the Senate right now. Nancy Pelosi stepping aside in a leadership role in the House come 2023. How does that impact the party as a whole? The Democratic Party? Correct. Um, you know, I think most Democrats felt that it was time for Nancy Pelosi to step aside. Nancy Pelosi, I'm going to say it, she's going to go down as a revered his, uh, figure in American political history. The first female speaker in the, what, 240 years of the Republic. Uh, she was not only respected just on the basis of that historical fact, but the fact that she was an excellent organizer, an excellent counter of nose, noses, an excellent behind-the-scenes player, a whipper of votes. Uh, she was good at what she did. She was a, an excellent legislator. Uh, every, you know, there's no in-between when it comes to Nancy Pelosi. Uh, she's reviled by many people, particularly Republicans, obviously, particularly MAGA, Repu MAGA Republicans, uh, but, you know, really uh, revered by others on the Democratic side. She was speaker twice. Uh, she finally stepped aside when uh, Democrats, again, barely lost the House of Representatives. It would have been really interesting to see what she did if Democrats had hold on, held on. Uh, but it's time for a change. Everybody recognizes that. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.